Welcome to Mindcrime. Today we shall be looking at one of the types of dialysis known as peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is a type of dialysis that is achieved using a peritoneal cavity as a primary site for ultra filtration. A catheter is inserted into the abdominal cavity allowing the infusion of what's known as the dialysate solution. This dialysate solution then dwells within the abdomen using this peritoneal membrane as a semipermeable membrane for the transfer of waste products out of the body. In peritoneal dialysis, we can achieve it using two ways. Either continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis or CAPD, whereby multiple exchanges are made each day, or either by using automated peritoneal dialysis or APD. In automated peritoneal dialysis, the exchange is made overnight when the patient is asleep. The abdominal cavity usually holds large number of organs of the digestive system and is lined by this thin membrane known as peritoneum. A dialysis fluid or dialysis is introduced into a peritoneal cavity through a catheter that is placed usually on the lower part of the abdomen as it is shown in this image. And in this type of dialysis, the peritoneum serves as the dialysing membrane. The peritoneal cavity normally can carry or can hold more than 3 liters, but in clinical practice we only use 1.5 liters to 2.5 liters in peritoneal dialysis. This peritoneal dialysis is a type of ultracorporeal blood purification where there is no blood ever leaving the body of the patient. Before we go any further, we need to understand what is an osmotic pressure gradient for us to understand better about this peritoneal dialysis. So an osmotic pressure gradient is applied by the addition of a dialysis fluid over an osmotic agent which will then suck fluid from the blood and the concentration of this osmotic agent is chosen to give just the fluid removal that is needed. So in most cases, glucose is used to create this osmotic pressure and the fluid that is being removed is done by the process known as ultrafiltration which is driven by osmotic pressure gradient. So, solutes are transported across the membrane by a process known as diffusion. The driving force is the concentration gradient difference between the peritoneal dialysis fluid and the blood. So, waste products that are present in the blood perfuse the peritoneum and then diffuse from the blood vessels into the cleaner dialysis fluid and they are taken out of the body. So, the dialysis fluid should be installed for 4 to 6 hours. When this dialysis fluid is drained from the abdominal cavity, it usually contains waste products and excess fluid that is extracted from blood. Peritoneal dialysis is most often applied and effective as a continuous therapy. In this way, it is more physiological treatment when compared to hemodialysis. The abdominal cavity and organs contained in it a lined by a thin, smooth membrane that is known as the peritoneum. This peritoneum is a loose connective tissue that contains blood vessels and nerves. If we put it under a microscope, we will notice three layers between the peritoneal cavity and the bloodstream. And these are the capillary walls, the interstitial layer, and the mesothelium. Each of these layers acts as a barrier to the transport of fluids and solutes in peritoneal dialysis. For us to understand how fluid removal is achieved, we need to understand how osmosis works. Osmosis is quite a simple concept whereby it is a process in which water moves through a semi membrane from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration or a higher solute concentration. In peritoneal dialysis, the normal osmotic agent that we use is glucose. 
However, glucose is not an ideal osmotic agent because it can readily be transported across the peritoneum. Large concentration of glucose creates a temporary osmotic gradient before it starts being absorbed into the blood. The higher the glucose concentration, the larger the osmotic pressure that results in a larger fluid removal. If peritoneal dialysis exchanges are missed or they dwell more than 6 hours, fluid may be gained by the patient, fluid may be gained by the patient rather than being lost. The volume of dialysis solution that is administered is also an important factor for the total fluid removal as it will take longer for the concentration gradient to decline in larger volume of fluid. And transport capacity for the fluid across the peritoneal membrane varies greatly between patients, mainly the pore area and the capacity to reabsorb fluid which affect fluid removal. The next thing which we need to look at, the next thing besides fluid removal is the solid removal. The most important principle for solid removal in peritoneal dialysis is the effusion for which the driving force is the concentration gradient between the blood and the dialysis fluid. So small solids move quickly through the membrane creating an equilibrium during the dwell period. And larger solids move slowly across the peritoneum, reaching equilibrium point takes quite some time. Therefore, both the solute and fluid removal in peritoneal dialysis is controlled by four factors that is glucose concentration the dual time, volume, and characteristics of the peritoneal membrane. What are the components of the peritoneal dialysis fluid? The components of peritoneal dialysis fluid can be divided into three, electrolytes, buffer, and osmotic agents. The most abundant electrolyte in peritoneal dialysis fluid is sodium. This fluid is hyponatremic so it has a concentration lower than the blood to ensure sufficient removal of sodium. In standard peritoneal dialysis fluid there is no potassium. Today there's a tendency to use normal calcemic peritoneal dialysis fluid as many patients receive extra calcium from phosphate binding drugs and the buffer that we use in peritoneal dialysis fluid is lactate. Lactate is known to be metabolized to form bicarbonate that is the most important buffer in the blood. As the rate of fluid transport is related to osmotic strength of the peritoneal dialysis solution, the ultrafiltration can be controlled by an appropriate glucose concentration. And the normal range of this glucose concentration include 1.5%, 2.3% and 4.25%. Though we said earlier, Glucose is not an ideal because it's rapidly absorbed from the peritoneal dialysis fluid and may lead to problems with fluid removal, whereby patient gains calories and can lose appetite, resulting in overweight and malnourishment. Disturbances of carbohydrate and lipid metabolism may also occur in these patients, and high molecular weight glucose polymer known as extraneo or ecodextrin provides sustained ultrafiltration for a longer overnight duels. What are the two modes of treatment in peritoneal dialysis? The first one, we have a continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis or CAPD. Whatever the method that is used, it is of the highest importance that the treatment is, in, is performed with great hygienic care as the introduction of bacteria in the abdomen can lead to what's known as peritonitis. In continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, we mean that you manually exchange all solution for the new solution multiple times a day. And this mode is the commonly used and now was the manual method where each exchange is taken care of the patient. Typically, the regimen requires four bags of two liters per day, meaning that the patient performs four bags during a day. The next mode is an automated peritoneal dialysis. To increase the efficacy of peritoneal dialysis and the help of patients with the exchanges, a machine can be used 
known as automated peritoneal dialysis. The advantages of APD over CAPD are higher clearance of solutes as a higher volume can be achieved, better fluid removal as shorter dwell time can be used, and more freedom during the daytime as no exchanges need to be made. But the drawbacks are that it is of higher cost and has difficulties when it comes to portability. What are the complications of peritoneal dialysis? The most common and important complication of peritoneal dialysis is peritonitis. The normal cause of this inflammation is a bacterial infection whereby the bacteria can enter from the patient's skin, equipment or from an unclean environment which can be flushed into the abdominal cavity by the instilled peritoneal dialysis fluid. The exit side of the catheter is also known to be an infection route. Repeated episodes eventually damage the peritoneum and force the patient to choose another treatment, preferably hemodialysis. Peritoneal dialysis leaks, hernias, and common complications, partly as a result of an increased abdominal pressure. And uh, APD can be a suitable option because the patient may be lying down, as these patients are not CAPD candidates with the added abdominal pressure. Patient technique survival is better for hemodialysis. Uh, for example, patients can usually be treated with hemodialysis for a longer period of time compared to peritoneal dialysis. And recurring episodes of peritonitis together with loss of residual function are the major causes for patients to be transferred from peritoneal dialysis to hemodialysis.